Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about universal gravitation. This is the kind of gravitation in physics where we're using the big G constant as opposed to little g gravity, where big G is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th power. Very small number. And how this fits in an equation is we say the force of gravity, and I like to say big G instead of little g, because little g is just mass times gravity, but big G is equal to capital G times mass one times mass two in the numerator divided by a radius, or I like to say distance, squared. Distance and radius being the same thing, basically. And this is a more formal version of the gravity equation. As a matter of fact, this one below is just like a bunch of shortcuts, which is basically what little g is. But when do we use this complex formal equation? And there's two times you use it. One, when we're talking about two really massive objects, such as planets, stars, asteroids, etc. And the second time you use that equation is when we're talking about a distance really far from Earth. And that's subjective, of course. Like, what does it mean to be really far? But we'll talk about it in the examples we look at today. So the first example I want to look at is, let's say I have two massive objects, one with mass 3m and the other with mass just m. In other words, we can think of this as two planets, planet A and planet B, where the mass of planet A is three times that of planet B. And I will say that the distance separating them, I will call it capital D. And so the first question I'm going to ask of you is I want you to find the force of planet A on planet B in terms of the variables you see. So first I'm going to write the equation down again. F big G equals capital G times mass one times mass two over distance squared. It doesn't matter what we say is mass one and mass two. We're going to be including both of them, which means it's just going to be capital G times mass one, which is three M times the second mass, which is little M divided by distance is capital D and that's squared. And we can say that this simplifies to big G times 3m squared over d squared. And this is a fine answer. And this is the force of A on B. Hopefully you notice that this has to be the same as the force of B on A, meaning these two forces are equal to each other because of Newton's third law. But also because if you were to plug in the equation, it's literally the same equation. You just move these masses, you'd switch places, but you still get the exact same answer. So all I'm saying is force of A on B is the exact same thing as the force of B on A. They're both that thing right there. My next question for you is, again, same exact example with A, B, 3M, and M separated distance D. My next question is, which planet has the greater acceleration? So why don't you pause the video, think about it for a second, and then unpause it when you're ready to hear the answer. Okay, so here's what we'd say. First, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Technically, that's supposed to be net force, but since there's really only one force acting on these guys, it's the force of gravity, big G, on both of them. That's really the only force we have here. So in other words, Fg is equal to the mass of each planet times its acceleration. And since this is the same for both, which means I'm gonna write this equation twice, once with mass 3m times a, and once with mass just m times a. If these two things are equal to each other, then the only way this makes sense is if this acceleration right here is three times as much. I'll call it 3a. Because then, since they're equal to each other, 3ma on the left will equal m times 3a on the right. And just remember this was planet a and this was planet B, meaning planet B's acceleration is three times as much. So who has the greater acceleration? B does, even though they have the same force. Okay, now here's another question. Again, the exact same planets we were just talking about, 3m and little m, but this time the distance they're separated by, I'm gonna move them closer together to now one half d, and I want you to tell me the new force. In other words, I want you to find the new force and then divide it by the original force we found. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write the original again was big G times 3M times M over D squared. Again, this was the original from the first part, giving us G 3M squared over D squared. Now to find F nu, the new force, it's going to be capital G times the masses didn't change, so still 3M squared, but now the distance changed. Now the distance is 1 half D squared, and yes, that does have to go in parentheses because I'm going to be squaring both the 1 half and the D, giving me G times 3M squared divided by 1 fourth D squared. And now all I got to do is I got to divide F nu divided by the original. That will get me my change in force. So I'm going to write G times 3M squared over 1 fourth D squared divided by G 3M squared D squared. So that's the new divided by the original. Now the goal is to cancel out as many variables as I can. I see the G's cancel. I see mass cancels. I see D cancels, but not the 1 fourth and I see the three cancels. And after all the dust settles and we see what's left, all that's left is one over one fourth over one, which is a really confusing complex fraction. But the good news is we can make this easier by first of all saying this divided by one doesn't matter because you're just dividing by one, so it's not even there. So really we just have one divided by one fourth. Whenever you have complex fractions, the easiest thing to do is to multiply by the reciprocal, meaning Instead of 1 over 1 fourth, write 1 times 4 over 1, giving me a final answer of 4, which means when I move the planets closer together, it's going to be 4 times stronger the force than it was before. Which makes sense because as we can imagine, the closer these two planets are to each other, the stronger the force between them is going to be. And one thing I also want to mention is eventually when you take physics 2, we're going to see problems just like this, except instead of planets, they're going to be charges. It's going to be like a proton over here and an electron over here, and they're going to be separated some distance d. And it's going to sound very similar to what we just did with these planets. But that's getting ahead of ourselves because we're still in physics 1. And so that's all the questions I wanted to look at today. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.